look at creating a cobweb diagram which is based around exercise 4 from the week 2 tutorials. So firstly I create in cell A3 an X column, in B3 a Y equals X column and then I'm going to have an F of X column and in this case my function is 3.57 X 1 minus X so this column here just reflects the value of the function that I'm trying to draw the cobweb diagram for. I'm going to start with the value of x being 0 and I'm going to increase that value by 0.05. The smaller that number is, 0.05, the more accurate your diagram will be. Make it larger, the less accurate your diagram will be. So I'm going to copy that down until I've got the value of 1. So you notice how x increases by 0.05 each time. Now that value there, y equals x, I'm just going to use that formula there to ensure that I get the same, same numbers in each particular column. So essentially this column here represents the x-axis, this column here represents the line y equals x, and this column here will represent the formula 3.57 times the value of x you have times 1 minus the value of x you have. So that formula there is just Excel's way of writing that particular thing there and I've referred it directly to that cell. So I hit return and now I can copy that down and I have the function values at each of those particular points. Now this number here should actually be 0 but Excel's rounding has only got it to being 0 up to a certain number of decimal places but that won't actually affect what's going on and you can see in here all the formulae we have floating around in here so it, that formula correctly refers to that cell as it should do now what I need to do is I have to create two more columns and these are going to be the columns that give us the cobweb values so what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink down this column here so I can see things better I'm going to have a column that says iteration, so this is basically the number of times I've done my cobweb diagram. I'm going to have the x value and the y value. So I'm going to start initially with my starting point, i.e. my zero iterate and the x value is going to be 0.5 and my y value will be 0. So this corresponds to me drawing or picking a point on the x-axis before I actually do my cobweb diagram. Now after I do one I want to work out where that vertical line goes. Well in this particular case the x value will stay the same because I just draw a vertical line up from that particular point. But the y value, now that becomes the value of the function at the x value I have. So I enter that particular formula there. Now to help me actually do this when I'm copying it down, the formula rather than referring to that one there will actually refer to the cell above and this will help the reason I do this is because it helps me when I want to copy these formulae down so that now gives me that's my starting point and that corresponds to the point that I draw the vertical line up to now I want to do another iteration so to do that the x coordinate becomes the old y coordinate and the y coordinate remains the same. Now when I apply an iteration the x formula becomes the old x coordinate and now I have to evaluate the function which is 
3.57 times the x value, 1 minus the x value. And that now gives me, all I've done is effectively taken the x value up and drawn a line across. And these here, that gives me the first point, that gives me the second point, that gives me the third point, and that's my fourth point. Now, I select all of this, and I can sit there and now drag this formula down so I can apply a number of iterations to it. So I go down here. And now it's calculated all the points in the cobweb diagram for the fir for 0, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, and so on, up to the 10th iteration, without us having to actually do any work for that. Now what we have to do is we want to firstly draw the initial graph before we drew the cobweb, so I select all of those cells there. I go to chart wizard, I select the XY scatter graph, and I'm going to join these things using this particular graph here. And you can see that that's drawn our graph, so let's finish that. So let's add that to that point there. So there's a the line y equals x, there's our function, and it's drawn it nice and clearly for us. Now, to that I want to add the cobweb da data. So what I need to do is I need to right click in that particular area there and I need to go to source data. So I right click on the grey area of the graph and go to source data. So now what I need to do is I need to select series I need to add one. And I'm going to call this cobweb. Now, I have to select the x values that I want. And then what I do is I highlight the x values that I need. So that would be this column here. So I highlight those and then I click this button here. And that gives me the x values. And now to finish, I have to then select the y values. So the y values will be these in here. And again, I select that box there. And you can now see that it's drawn in our cobweb diagram. So now I'm just going to click OK. And there's our cobweb diagram. So you can see, there's my starting point. 0.5 naught, which corresponds to that point there. Then from there we go up to 0 0.5, 0 0.9, 0 0.8925, which is that point there. We then go across to, there's two points very close together, so it's very difficult to actually find them. But around that point we've gone across here and we've got well, there is a point there, but it's impossible to actually find it. 0 0.925925, which is that point there. Then we go down, which gives us that point there, and so on and so forth. And that gives us our cobweb diagram. Your task is now to draw similar cobweb diagrams where this function here is changed. So you have to redo your cobweb diagram and your function to reflect that change.